Okay, we're back. We're live. We're here at the five o'clock block here on a given Thursday, the day two days after Election Day here in the USA. And we're talking about global connections, and we want to check in with Kartiki Mishra in uh, Varanasi, India. And we're going to ask him about America as now seen from the point of view of India. So interesting. It's always interesting, Kartiki. Thank you for joining us. Okay, so let's talk about let's talk about what's going on in India. You know. You're, you're a graduate student in business school, last I knew. Um, what are you doing now, and how is school for you in the yes, time yes. of COVID? Yeah, well, I'm pursuing my MBA right now, and as colleges are shut down, so it's all online medium. It's all through online stuff, teaching going on that way. Colleges are shut down. I don't think when they will open. Maybe in May or maybe in maybe in June. So when, when do you graduate? Uh, well, 2021, uh, one semester is still there. I'm in third semester, one semester is still left. Okay, Fourth what's your semester. occupation? That's final, uh, I still have time. What, what's, your, what's your plan after that? Well, uh, companies are coming to college for placement and I will sit for them if I get chance, if I get good package, I'm going to sit for them. How are you doing? Are you an A student? Uh, kinda, yes, uh, <laughs> uh, I am, but <laughs> I, I, well, I figure you're right up there. <laughs> What's your specialty in business? What, what are you, what are you uh, focusing on? Well, uh, well, uh, my specialization in MBA is finance, so I'm very keen about uh, global politics as well as uh, how things going around the world. You know, in the U.S., so we don't my travel much anymore. Degree gives up idea of what's happening. In the U.S., yeah, we don't, I we don't travel much anymore, and I wonder if you see your special occupation as requiring travel and whether... Uh, you know, these days, given COVID and the fact that we do not yet have a vaccine, um, and, you know, uh, it's spiking everywhere in the world. Um, I wonder how you see travel, I mean, as, as part of your future. Uh, well, uh, I think COVID situation will end in 2020. After that, traveling can resume. I think things will normalize if we stay optimistic about this. Well, flights are taking place in India. Trains are open for public now. Traveling is take, uh, is going on rapidly around parts of India. Well, I believe things will normalize by 2021. I oh, hope so. Okay, I might hold you to that now. Maybe we should make a small wager on the side. Okay, so let's talk about school. So you're going to school with uh, by by way of uh, remote. What what program are you using again? Uh, Google Meet for education. I believe Google Meet we use frequently. So all the classes are online? Yeah, definitely, because there is no chance of going to college, so all the classes are online. So how, how is COVID doing in, you know, in Varanasi? How is it doing in India? My recollection is it, it got a relatively slow start, but then it really spiked up. Yeah. How, how is it right now? People are certainly now unlocking things as we, we are uh, opening theaters, we are opening restaurants. Uh, we are on the move towards opening things up to face this challenge because we can't always stay, sit like this in a lockdown. It's, it's just not possible. So uh, people are taking steps. Government uh, is taking steps. But the only thing which I am concerned about that people are because I think uh, on my personal advice, people should not do that to everyone, not just in India, but in the United States as well. Well, one, one of the issues in the United States and other countries is whether the government should make a, an enforceable rule about masks. Uh, in, in, in the case of the Trump administration, they've been very confusing mixed messages about masks. Uh, what, what about uh, India? Is there a, a national requirement that you wear masks outside? Uh, is there a law that, um, you know, w w which provides that if you don't wear a mask, you have some sort of sanctions, some sort of punishment or fine. Uh, how, how is that working? Do, do, does the government do anything well, about it or is it up to the individual? Well, uh, it's uh, one thing I would like to say, government has provided us uh, guidelines that uh, masks, uh, social distancing and sanitizing on regular basis is the advice from the side of government and we must have to follow that uh, and it's mandatory i believe uh, police takes sometimes actions against people who don't wear masks 
but it is now mandatory it's for everyone that everyone should wear a mask it's 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 necessary for their own protection but people are becoming careless what to do about it well i i take my precautions always when i go out i wear a mask i carry a sanitizer with me whenever until now that how he or she takes care of him uh, so what about testing and tracing you know we have um you know, we've been trying to develop fast tests where you can tell in a few minutes whether somebody tests positive. And uh, we've been, you know, trying to set up systems in given communities to, to track and trace uh, the cases so we can, we can uh, you know, deal with, uh, you know, containing the spread. Um, are, are you testing and are you doing tracking, tracing uh, through the community? definitely we are we are doing uh, test in large quantities on people that uh, i think most of the times where tests are in millions or uh, I, um, in my own state where i reside the total number of tests i believe are around uh, 120 million done so you can imagine that uh, government is taking actions and tests are being doing done rapidly uh, rapid test kits are there in india which we got from korea and, and other countries as well, but tests are going on. Well, that's Government good. is trying to as much as possible. So, so Korea has been very successful in this, and uh, yes, they've been successful in testing, and tracking, and tracing, and so forth. Um, are you as are you as successful? Uh, well, uh, cases are there, but I, I personally believe that more can be done. It, it's it's every time a stage higher so i believe there is always room for improvement and government can improve well this is uh, you know this is every indication of going on uh, testing yeah there's every indication of spreading and spreading and spreading until there's a vaccine and um it's hard to say when it ends i mean i have talked to a lot of people a lot of uh, epidemiologists doctors and um you know they're pretty much convinced that it's not going to happen for a year. And um, you know, even if you have a vaccine, you have to distribute it. In the case of India, you have over a billion people you have to distribute it to. That's, that's a real job. That's very complex, very expensive, time consuming. So uh, how do people feel about the possibility of a vaccine? Are they optimistic or are you optimistic? Well, do you in India, the, um, the loot in India is the Serum Institute of India, which is uh, developing a vaccine. It, it's the, I think, top leader in developing vaccine in India right now. And this Serum Institute of India has uh, packed with uh, UK as well on vaccine. And we are on, on stage of developing. We are, we are trying our best to develop a vaccine. We don't know the exact date when it will be in for people, but we are uh, developing a vaccine on, a, on a, a rapid level. I think we are trying our best. Now, when you say that, you mean we is India. You're developing the vaccine in India with the yes, medical research yes. people in India. Hmm, good. So uh, you touched on this a minute ago, but I'm very interested in how the economy is doing. I imagine you're spending a more time at home uh, you're not out and about, but I also imagine that people in general are spending more time at home and not everybody is working and there must be certain um, unemployment and the, there must be some businesses that have shut down. Am I right about that? How's the economy in Varanasi doing? How's the economy in India doing? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In, in general, when I say economy, the organized sector and or, unorganized sector, these two are primarily the two main parts of economy. So the organized sector is facing crisis because of low production, low sales. So they, they are in loss. That's very genuine that we have seen here. But the, the most tragic part is that this unorganized sector in India, which is not in records, which is not in, I should say, in formal sector or the formal track of records and paperwork, this sector is drastically hit. Many people, are affected in this crisis. Many people have lost jobs because the workers who, who are migrant workers, like for example, if someone is from Varanasi and working in Delhi as a migrant worker, 
so we don't have record of that person whether that person got back to his job after opening the lockdown or not so unorganized sector is drastically hit uh, well uh, records can be high but i i i think it's very difficult to figure out what what uh, rate of unemployment we are having right now yeah okay well I, I i hope you're able to contain it because you have a huge country there and you have a country where there's some great medical talent but it's not medical facilities are not in every corner of the country so in some places if you get sick with covid am i right if you get sick with COVID, there's nowhere for you to go. There's no um, hospital, no emergency room that you can go to. And sometimes there's pretty much nothing uh, you can do when you get infected. In some places, right? Yeah, in some places, things can get ugly and nasty, as you're saying. But, well, uh, our recovery rate is high, gladly, because we are having a recovery rate of 91% right now in India. Like th there is a chance of 91% that if a person gets COVID, he or she might recover. So uh, this is one hopeful thing that our recovery rate is higher than our, uh, I should say, the increase in crisis, uh, rates of COVID or Corona cases. So this is one good news for India that our recovery rate is quite yeah. high. 90, and our mortality is around 1% or 1.5%. So. Ah, okay. okay. Yes, exactly. Uh, so let's move on to uh, Mr. Modi, Prime Minister. Um, you know, uh, I, last time I looked, uh, he was very popular. Last time I looked, um, he was good for business and he was doing good things. How do people feel about him now? Uh, what is his popularity these days? Uh, well, when government implemented that lockdown, a 21-day lockdown government implemented on March, uh, in, on March 23rd, and lockdown kept extending for four times. So it, it continued well over for two months. And when after that lockdown opened, uh, people faced severe issues. So that lockdown step uh, hit the economy hard. So, well, it's not just India, it's all around the world. Even UK is going for a second term lockdown. France is going for a second term lockdown. That lockdown was pretty hard harsh on people, on, on, on people who are having or jobs in or sector in other areas as well. So that was one, one drastic measure, I believe. Just, I'm curious. Uh... Well, that affected. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that measure of lockdown and how government dealt with this corona was one thing that it could have been better. If, if government would have taken measure since very beginning, well, I believe that there is always a room for improvement in such cases. And I believe so that government might have worked better. Well, they did their best, but it could have been better. You know, a few months ago, we talked to a, uh, uh, I guess she's a, uh, she's a political scientist in Mumbai. And uh, we talked about the Galwan Valley and the border dispute uh, between India and, and uh, China way up there in the Himalayas. And uh, I wonder, you know, how much people care about that. Uh, I wonder how Indian people generally feel about China these days. Um, for one thing, uh, you know, mm. maybe arguably they, they blame China for COVID. Uh, maybe they feel that China is being too uh, aggressive on, on border issues like the Galwan Valley. Uh, how, what's the status of that dispute and how do people feel about it? Well, uh, China is one big problem in Asia and I'm not shy away to say that because uh, China is a threat and West and Asia must acknowledge that China is an aggressive power and it has affected many nations. So what's the status? Not just Japan, every nation, every nation which is border. Uh, it's been six months, was one major clash in June, and uh, there are still troops standing eyeball to eyeball on border. We have been in seven rounds of talks, all ended up in failure. There is no, I think, solution in, in future as well. We are still going in for talks because I think we don't need a war with China at least. And China hopes also we don't go in a war with them because it will be a drastic thing. Uh, nuclear powers countries, I believe, should not engage in conflicts. Amen. Like this. 
well i believe mean, not just for covid not just for covid but for india as well on border because well uh, one one thing i would like to add to this is that uh, china and india when i am talking about border do not have a uh, border perception we have a different border perception like if they say they have border in three points we say that the border is at fourth point so there is a difference in perception of border and this leads to clashes and why it is that the chinese government does not acknowledge the border with india on the himalayan regions which they say that this agreement was done by the british government in past and well now it's indian government and we don't acknowledge the border made by the british government in in 1940s so this is one thing and since 1950s till now there is no clear or cream uh, on i should say lined border with china so it's all on perception and understanding and this leads to conflict most of the times yeah. most of the times uh, let me move on to uh, trump you know last time um, we talked or maybe a time or two ago i asked you how you felt and how people around you felt about trump and i recall that you you told me that you you favored trump because he was strong um, have you changed your mind in any way you, would you, you know, would you favor Trump today? Uh, I have seen his incompetency regarding COVID situation. It's it's pretty evident that how he dealt with Corona. He didn't acknowledge that problem in the beginning at first. This was one major thing that no world leader should ever do. That there is a crisis like this stage, and you can't simply say there is no Corona, there is no crisis. So this was one big problem which I saw in Trump. now coming to my part of support i supported trump on two things that he spoke very harshly for radicalism and what what happening around the globe so this was one cause of my support and the second was as well as we know china because china is a threat for india threat for united states and west as well so china is one thing that us must not undermine it's very clear and trump did not do that so there are only two reasons which i support trump for radicalism and china you know i i read a a piece uh, today in preparation for our discussion in the hindu which is an online um, newspaper about india and it talked about the relationship um between the us and um and china it's uh, rather uh, india and it talked about the relationship between modi and trump and what it concluded and i um this is my question to you what it concluded was that um trump was as far as modi was concerned as far as the indian government about india in general unpredictable and he had been unpredictable in in foreign relations with india all through his his uh, you know relationship even even uh, his trip to india and um the likelihood is that if he if he wins mm. another term he's going to be more unpredictable and that unpredictability is of some concern to india mm. am i right about that how do you feel about that how do the people around you feel about that well one thing i would like to add trump is a businessman trump is a businessman it's it's a known fact he sees profit and gains everywhere so he see he sees gains with india well if he gets some things from india he will get pledge to us but if he doesn't he won't support us that's what trump is we wanted a good trade with us he removed us from the gsp or the that uh, what favored india in terms of export that we got i think around 6 billion till 6 billion export we didn't have to pay taxes to united states well trump removed us from there stating that we are a developed country and a uh, trade deal was also there he was pressuring us for a trade deal so there, there are things where indian government and trump did not align and he wasn't predictable in that regard well uh, there are few key areas as in china these were the only two areas which were indian government and trump agreed my last question for you today although you know you may want to talk about other things we have a little time but my my most important question to you is this i i know that you're able to um, you know check up on us news uh, both in, in online and print and and of course on television mm -hmm. and uh, you probably been following as most of the world has been following uh, the election and i think what's interesting from the point of india 
is that India is a democracy. It's one of the world's greatest democracies. It's huge. And it is faithful to the notion of democratic representative, representative government to its credit uh, forever. And um, here you are in India watching, probably in some detail, probably investing some time uh, in watching the American campaign process unfold, in watching you know, all the things that happen around these campaigns, and watching Trump and, and Joe Biden in watching the election process and the, all the strange things that, that have happened over the past few weeks anyway. Um, and I know that your election process is not like that. Your election process is quicker. Your election process is more efficient and, and, and probably more faithful to the notion of, of a democratic government. That's my observation. But I wonder how you feel about all this trouble that is going on in the U.S. over this election, including violence in the streets and attempts to stop people from voting and suppression of voters, uh, you know, in every place in the country. I mean, you must you must be aware of those things, Karthik, and I wonder how you feel about them as a person in India, a concerned about democracy and concerned about voting, which is the core point of democracy. What do you think? Uh, definitely one thing, US is a benchmark for democracy, I must say that, that every single other nation in this world looks up to United States as a democracy or a benchmark for democracy. Well, what's happening in United States is a bit for concern for every democracy around the world. It's giving them a very clear, uh, I should say a lesson, how democracy should not work. So this is one big challenge. As, as we are talking, your president is still not decided who is going to be president. That's right. Trump is challenging that he might go to Supreme Court for counting. But that, and that's, that's one big issue that what lesson United States gives to other nations as democracy is a very big concern. Well, if, if this thing doesn't turn out to be very great or it turns out to be ugly, well, it will give a very clear lesson to West and to the rest of the world that democracy has been hampered in the United States. Well, I hope so. It doesn't yeah. do the situation. I believe that things get clearer. And I yeah. hope that a, a more reasonable, more sensible person comes to power. And I believe Biden wins because uh, days of Trump are over, I believe. So. <laughs> and uh, you will going to have an Indian origin vice president, Kamala Harris. So what's great than that? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so let me go to one last point, and that is, and that is this. You know, the fact is, and you've seen it in the, in the media, that um, almost half the country, maybe half the country, uh, has supported Trump, um, and half the country has uh, bought into his principles, which are racist, uh, xenophobic, um, uh, nationalistic, and <laughs> popular popularism. Uh, and, and really a failure of democracy, both in the Congress and in the government itself. Um, and, you know, and then you, you say to yourself, gee, this is not what we thought democracy was like. Um, is, is half the country is opposed to the democracy that we thought the United States had. So query, uh, what about the, your observations and your reactions to the United States in general? Um, there are people who think we are a declining power. Uh, there are people who think we can no longer exercise uh, world leadership as we have. And therefore we should not be treated in the same way uh, as has been the case since World War II. Um, as a global leader, perhaps we are losing our uh, initiative as a global leader. Is this something that is discussed? Is this something that you think and people around you think about in India? Well, when since Trump came to power in 2016, he moved out from many agreements. He moved from Human Rights Council. He, he moved out from Paris Accord. He moved out from UNESCO. Where, uh, and he, he stopped the funding of WHO as well because China, WHO was prepared. There are many steps taken by Trump which hampered the standing of United States. He moved out from Iran. Day. 
which you know people or americans worked for 25 years and he moved out from that as well we talked about it in past so there are significant steps which trump took and which hampered the image of united states globally and its position and uh, and this is one reason which aided to the chinese rise and and well now china is in a direct conflict with united states so in, in terms of if, military yes yeah go ahead well uh, there were things that trump did good he talked about terrorism he talked about chinese threat i agree to that but there were many significant things which i do not favor because as a democracy as a leader of the global uh, liberal thinking uh, that was a wrong decision moving out of such uh, i think high esteemed positions or places so that's my conclusion so that's my yeah well, suppose uh, suppose joe biden wins um it's not clear yet but suppose joe well, biden well i hope wins. he does and yes so oh, thank you thank you cuz I, i feel the same way um and he calls you up he calls you in veranasi and he says uh, karthiki i need some advice i would like your advice on my foreign policy with with india i like to know how i should treat india going forward i want to have the best possible relationship with india i would like india to have a better opinion of the united states um and and become as close as we can what is your advice to joe biden when he ask when he asks you that question karthiki uh well that would be a good thing when he calls me uh, uh well my advice personally would be that as a democracy united states and india have a converging views on many issues there might be differences but i sincerely believe united states and india can lead the way for, forward for the world and what i believe united states and india should work on multiple areas trade human rights and every single thing that is possible on this planet for not only the growth of our people but for benefit of the whole world that's my opinion for mr biden and that's my advice to biden if he calls me that yes i want to work with india in every single field in in highest order possible with all the priorities being given to both the countries whether india gives privilege to united states and i expect the same thank you karthik that's a lovely statement so I of it biden does that yeah okay You know, you wrote me uh, some things that you wanted to talk about and I and I forgot what they are. Is there anything on the list that you sent me that you would like to cover today? Uh well, one 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 last point that uh, one I would like to make that uh well I hope Biden wins first of all. I again I say that because uh, I think it's over for Trump. Well, now uh, the uh, last thing which i and which everyone is facing what you saw in charlie hebdo and samuel patty what happened in france so that is one big concern i want to address and this is one thing that western needs to see that this radicalism should be stopped this is one thing i would like to add last one all right karthik i'm glad we got together again i i hope we can do this again soon um the world is changing faster um and uh um, you know the broadband is better between Varanasi and Honolulu so I'm happy to see that <laughs> and I look forward to our next discussion thank you so much Karki Mishra aloha